Pray forgive me. I was delayed. It's fine, Orange. We're all here now. Let's get down to business then, shall we? Come what may, we must prevent the Telophoroi's plans from coming to fruition. At present, I see two paths for gathering the information which may aid us in achieving that goal. The first involves an investigation into the change which has come over Charlian, not to mention the recent inscrutable behaviour of the Forum. As most of you know, the 99 members of the Forum are elected from the general populace. This alone guarantees a plethora of opinion with regards to foreign policy. The Bibliotheques, for example, are a group of conservatives which would have Charlian focus on recording history while remaining entirely uninvolved in the making of it. And at the other extreme, we have advocates for proactive diplomacy and direct intervention. My grandfather Galef was one such member, as was Archon Louisois. Yet despite our diverse factions and philosophies, the recent vote to deny Eorzea's request for assistance was unanimous. Even more concerning was the fact that many cited other, more pressing duties as justification for their recalcitrance. Fortuno's refusal in Gridania had those same undertones. It was as if, having stared unblinking into the face of impending doom, he had simply turned away to pursue something more important. But what could that possibly be? A mystery indeed and one which I ask for your help to solve. Our future may depend on it. As for our second potential path, it concerns a request made directly to the students of Baldessian. Our organization was founded primarily to study strange and unexplained phenomena the world over. Mysterious relics and ruins, arcane disturbances, and so forth. Compared to our more isolationist Charlian colleagues, we have strong connections overseas, namely with scholars and academics who share our passion for the unknown. The request in question comes from one such acquaintance, Nadana, an alchemist residing in distant Thavnair. Her missive describes the sudden appearance of a tower, and the subsequent summoning of what I can only assume is a lunar primal. In response to this threat, the satrap of Rads at Han, the individual who governs the city-state, has instructed the alchemists to find a means to deal with the spire. The artisans of that land are heirs to an ancient tradition, one rather unlike that of their Uldan counterparts. It is possible, nay, probable, that they have gleaned truths unattainable by Eorzea or her Far Eastern allies. They do, in fact, appear to have a strategy in mind, though it will require further research. To that end, they have requested an introduction to a capable warrior shielded by the blessing of light. Assuming we divide our forces to pursue both of Kral's lines of inquiry, then having you join the group heading to Thavnair would seem the obvious choice. But the investigation in Charlian is of vital importance as well. Equal, I think, to the Thavnarian one given that the fate of the world may hinge on the results of both. Yes, it is quite the quandary. Though it is a great imposition and an altogether too common one, our efforts would be more likely to succeed were you to lead the charge on both fronts. You are indeed our champion. As to which task to tackle first, we will defer to your decision. 
Let us next decide how everyone else might best be assigned. As for myself, I shall continue what I've begun in Charlian. I should also like to steal the services of an Archon or two. And thereby gain access to a greater range of reading material. I will help with that. Allow me to offer my assistance. I have some small amount of experience in the field of research. Alizé and I would also like to help, if you would have us. Anything to understand even a fraction of what our father and the Forum might be thinking. Of course, the more the merrier. Right, the rest of us will make the journey to Thavna. Thoughts? Objections? I passed through Thavnir on my way to infiltrate the Empire, and though I'm not qualified to give a guided tour, I did gain a sense of where things lie. I'll be happy to have you along then. So for this group, it will be you, me, and Uriange. Give me a moment afterwards, and I'll supply you with all the details of Nadana's request. Consider this hall our rendezvous point once our respective tasks are complete. May our investigations prove fruitful. When our father disowned us, I couldn't believe what I was hearing. It wasn't until much later that his words began to sink in, that I began to feel the weight of what it meant. Do you remember when the decision was made to come to Charlien? Grahas said that the Forum was determined to keep us in the dark, and that father's venomous performance was part of that strategy to keep us at arm's length. Perhaps it was. Father argued with Grandfather on many occasions, but never with such dismissive contempt. And when he demanded what justifies the sacrifices we make in war, I honestly didn't know what to say. Neither did Alpha know, I know, but never for one moment did I believe we had made the wrong choice? So all I could do was fume silently. It was only afterwards that I realized how childish I had been, how being stubborn and self-righteous must run in the family. If I could have just mustered a civil response, then things might have turned out differently. They must be ferrying goods to Labyrinthos. A vast complex beneath the island. Charlian is famous for archiving knowledge from around the world. Well, that knowledge is not preserved exclusively in dusty tomes and desiccated samples. Our living library comprised of all manner of flora and fauna, is housed and studied within that underground facility. Still, that did seem to be an unusually large shipment. When I lived here, it was rare to even see such cargo transported by boat. Wait! Didn't you hear something in the last stand about the gleaners coming and going more than usual? Well, I think they're the ones we saw manning those boats. 
and Gleaner's answer to the forum. If the appearance of the Telophoroi prompted this sudden burst of activity, then Labyrinthos may hold a clue as to what the Forum is planning. Deep beneath the scholar's city shines a false sun within a fabricated sky. In any age exist those who consider the floor an extension of their bookshelves, and this vault's architects surely belonged to that special breed. If the stack grows too high, start a new one. If no room remains, then make more rooms. A simple solution at first, and then bit by bit, a profound transformation. Knowledge buried beneath knowledge, a growing, creeping labyrinth from which there is no escape. I must admit, the artifice is very convincing. But I assure you that we are beneath Charlian itself. The breeze you feel, the flowing waters you hear, all created by the hand of man. The island is volcanic, you see, and once upon a time this great hollow must have been a reservoir for magma. It was discovered some 400 years ago, at which point it was repurposed as a storage facility for scrolls and samples and such. Renovations have continued, with nigh on no interruption to this day, with the lower levels still undergoing expansion. Aren't those people gleaners? Aye, judging by their dress. They are said to work alone as a rule, but it would seem that rule is being enthusiastically broken today. It may be as you suspected, that they are engaged in a task apart from the norm. Let's spread out and get some answers then. to me just now. No. How odd. I must be a bit dizzy from the descent. I'll be fine, I'm sure. Let's get to work, shall we? 